Yo, let's continue our discussion on how to predict price in cryptocurrency. This is video three of a three part series for complete newbies to cryptocurrency trading. So if you're a seasoned trader, this is definitely not for you. So in the previous video, we spoke about the order book, but now I actually want to apply it to the analysis, to the technical analysis, but not in the way that you're used to. So let's just jump right in. So I want you to take a look at the chart on screen right now and tell me, pause the video, think about it, what is going to happen with price next? I want you to go and make that prediction right now. Okay, so hopefully you've made a decision. Now, my honest opinion on this is you had a 50-50 chance on whether you're correct on what price is going to do next. Now, the way we're looking at price right now is we're looking at the candlestick bars. We're looking at the open, the high, the low and the close of this chart pattern over here. Now, this really doesn't tell us very much. It told us in a period of time, like right now, where we're looking at the one hour that at the start of the hour, the price opened here, then it closed down here. It went to a high then it went to a low here. That's really not that much information. Now, let's do some magic. Now, there's a lot more information going on over here. Now, first of all, where you see these bright green bars, these are volume. This represents volume and where volume was traded. The brighter the green, the more buy volume there was. The brighter the red, the more sell volume was. And you can even see it at what price levels that volume occurred. So never look at price information just as price. You need to look at it with volume. Remember in the last video in the order book, we spoke about how you can have tons of trading volume, but the price might not move at all and vice versa. This is a very good example of where there's very low volume. If you look down here at volume, we have like the 800 mark. I think this is Bitcoin over here. So there's actually very, very, very low volume right now in the market space. And yet, you know, price is still moving. So if you don't understand how that can happen, go back and watch the last video. But hopefully if you followed that, this will make sense to you. If I go back to the previous slide, this looks like a red candlestick over here or an upside down hammer. But if I look at it now, I can see that actually there was a ton of buy volume and yet the price was dropping. How does this make sense? Well, number one, this tells me that the buyers were exhausted and it didn't take many sellers to push that price down. In fact, we can see over here with the volume bar, we can see that it's a bright green over here, but it's kind of faded up here where volume was higher. It was sort of weakening. Now, this is really, really interesting information because if we continue to look at this chart, we see volume dropping off the edge of a cliff. I mean, it's gone down to pretty much zero. And when volume dropped that much, price went up. Now, remember in the last video, I spoke about looking for contradictions, look for things that don't make sense. Now, price is going up. There's like no volume over there. So that's probably just a few buyers coming in and the order book was totally thin. So price jumped up. What happens next? Now, I want you to predict now with this information, what is going to happen next with price? Bam! Like price just skyrockets down because it didn't take much. All it took was a few aggressive sellers to come in and that was going to push the price right, right down. So really the trick here is to look at price and volume together and to think about it in the context of the order book. If you watched the previous video, you're probably thinking, why are we going through these basics? This is the reason why, because now you can use those basics to read what's happening in the market. Now, if you were looking at the charts in terms of price and volume, you'd know you could see over here, okay, there's a ton of buy volume coming back in. Maybe we've just caught the bottom of this drop. Now, in the grand scheme of things, this is like a retail traders market over here. The price really isn't moving that much in the grand scheme of things, but this really illustrates and helps to serve a point that I've been wanting to make that look at price and volume, understand the context of what's going on, because it, you'll know it's not going to take much to push price a certain way if some sellers come in. I want to show you, you know, another example of this. If we take a look at this chart over here and analyze it a bit, we can see where the price was just range trading. But I want you to look down here at this indicator. Do you remember in the last video where I was talking about the buy and sell ratio? So you could have 5x buyers or 3x buyers compared to sellers. Well, this is telling us over here that we had five times more buyers than sellers going on and on and on. And guess what happened? Nothing. Price just stayed flat uh, in the grand scheme of it. Now, this chart's a bit warped because obviously it fell off the edge of a cliff. But the point is that price really didn't move 
very much, even though there was so much more buy volume than sell volume. So again, this tells us that if any aggressive sellers come in, which they did, price is going to drop heavily. And it, that's exactly what happened over here. The other thing I want you to think about is support and resistance, but don't draw up Fibonacci patterns. Don't just look at the high and the low and where the price touched the same price multiple times. That's not the true support and resistance. What's real support and resistance is what volume was traded at what price. And here we have a volume profile that actually gives you the spikes to say, okay, a lot of trading activity happened here. A lot of trading activity happened here. A lot of trading activity happened here. And in fact, you can apply this volume profile to different time periods and actually look at it in terms of the context of the past. So if, if the price was to drop even further below this point over here, you're going to want to know, okay, where's the likely next level of support where a lot of trading volume happened? That's when you're going to start looking at support and resistance because you want to know with this vacuum, where does the vacuum end? Where's the price going to go to? So this is just a very interesting way to look at the order book to understand volume. Again, here, by the way, I'm using tensor charts. You need to know that I'm affiliated with David who created tensor charts. I love this platform. It is the best. I will put a link to uh, tensor charts there because I will get um, some kind of commission. I think it's 5% commission if you sign up. Um, but by no means do you have to use that link. You can just go to tensorcharts.com and sign up there. It's a really good platform. You can use it for free actually, but I use the paid version because I get so much more information. So I hope I've given you a totally different way to analyze price, to analyze the order book over here. Again, this is for complete newbies. This is just an introduction. If you'd like more videos on this kind of content, just let me know and I'll work on it. So I really appreciate your time. I really hope that this helped you. Until the next video, take care and talk soon.